Good morning, Brighton, and welcome to uh, another beautiful morning and an opportunity to share the goodness of God's love and to celebrate Holy Communion here outdoors in this lovely park. And all are welcome to participate as fully as you can and want to, um, but not by singing aloud. So we're going to hum along uh, to our opening hymn. Thank you. Because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is from Exodus 14. After the plague of death striking all firstborn children in Egypt, Pharaoh relented in his grief and tells Moses to take the Israelite people out of his land. They collect as much as they can carry and head for the Sinai Peninsula. But Pharaoh, realizing there will be no slaves for the Egyptian economy, changes his mind once again and sends his army to stop the escape of the Israelites. The angel of God who is going before the Israeli army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved in in front of them 
and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with darkness, and it lit up the night, once did not come near all night. The Mo then Moses stretched out his hand on the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for them to their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The water returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did. Against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord in in his servant Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God, telling God's people. Thanks be to God. The Psalm of the day is Psalm 114. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob and people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea held it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What has ailed you, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of God of Jacob. Who turned the heart rock into a game of water. The second reading is from Romans. Paul addresses the issue brought to him of differences in people's observances, such as what to eat and when to worship. He insists that if they all keep God in mind first, and secondly, their neighbor's needs, then there's really nothing to argue about. All who live with love for God and neighbor are doing the right thing. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling our opin over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, 
abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow down to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Hear what the Spirit is telling God's people. should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave his debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat. He said, pay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. And he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slave saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not 
had had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O God, open our hearts and our memories that we may recall how much you have forgiven us that we might try to do likewise. Amen. Last week, I quoted to you one of my favorite uh, secular speakers, and uh, Brene Brown, and pointed you toward her podcast. Today, I'm going to start by quoting one of my favorite spiritual leaders, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, whom I've had the privilege to meet and be in the same room with him as he got an honorary doctorate from my seminary, from Father Dion's seminary, too. Um, and I'm sure you heard of Archbishop Tutu and his work in the healing of people in South Africa. And here is a quotation from him. To be neutral in a situation of injustice is to have chosen sides already. It is to support the status quo. Peace involves inevitable righteousness, justices, justice, wholesomeness, fullness of life, participation in decision-making, goodness, laughter, joy, compassion, sharing, and reconciliation. When we look squarely at injustice and get involved, we actually feel less pain, not more, because we overcome the gnawing guilt and despair that festers under our numbness. We clean the wound, our own and others, and it can finally heal. Our gospel today, our gospel today comes right on the heels of last week's when Jesus was talking about a conflict resolution between, especially between two people. And uh, if you were with us last week, I gave some concrete advice about apologizing and how to do it well and how to uh, not get all defensive if we possibly can. But today, our gospel twists that a little bit into reconciliation, which is different than apologizing. It's something deeper. It entails deep forgiveness. And I think the disciples listening to Jesus realize this is harder than just saying, I'm sorry. And so Peter, practical Peter, says, well, how many times do I have to do this? This sounds hard. Uh, do I have to do this seven times? Seven days in a week, seven colors in a rainbow, seven times to forgive somebody? That sounds about right, doesn't it? And Jesus says, oh, Peter, you can't count. The number of times you need to forgive, you can't, you can't count it on your fingers. Not even fingers plus toes. We're going to, how about 70 times 7? The different translations make that number differently. You have it 77 or 70 times. It's a lot. If you have to count, you are thinking about it wrong. And then he tells this this parable that, that sounds okay until the end. He hands him over to be tortured. So will my father do to you. What? Torture, Lord? Okay, we got to unpack this one a little bit. First, let's think about this situation. It is absurd, this parable. Jesus wants us to think in big, big, big terms. No one is going to have a debt that large, especially if they are a slave. So he just wants to kind of blow the counting on your fingers thing out of the water. So 
If we have a reckoning of 10,000 talents, that's, that's like hundreds of thousands of dollars. What slave is going to have that? So get your head out of the, we need to count on this literally. Huge debt forgiven, small debt hung on to, the king is not pleased. And what he's asking in this parable is not just about, it's not about finances. And I think the disciples all got that part. It's about forgiving something bigger than you can count. And that's hard. And when the king or God, or maybe it's not exactly a correspondence, but when the king in the parable is so angry and disappointed to hear from the other slaves what has happened. He brings the forgiven but not forgiving slave back to him. It's interesting how the community got involved in that transaction, isn't it? They see the forgiven one not forgiving and they say, hey, something's wrong here. It's affecting the larger community as well, the household. And the king says, you're going to be tortured by not forgiving. I think, as Desmond Tutu said, managing to reconcile lets free that gnawing, that gnawing pain of having something in your heart you have not forgiven. And it is such a common human experience. You don't have to have killed someone or ruined someone's life or bankrupted someone to feel guilty. We feel guilty if we've got a conscience for the, the little things we do to people or the different ways our relationships are hampered by the things we've done to someone else. And hanging on to that pain that you've inflicted as well as having it inflicted on you, is a kind of torture, isn't it? Can I tell them you're feeling lousy today, Lauren? Because she knows she's got something she's going to have to wrestle with forgiving. And we've all got that in our families. You know? My cousin called the other day. She's got a big problem with her brother, my other cousin. They're on the other side of the country, so there's not a whole lot I can do to get in the middle, but they got a big problem. They're going to have to figure that out. But she is just ill from knowing this is between them. So Jesus says, you can think of it like torture. And the king does not want people to be living under torture, believe me. So as I looked up for some stories, I mean, we've all heard of Desmond Tutu and the really astonishing ways he has enabled forgiveness in South Africa. But what about some more normal stories, huh? There's got to be something that's a little less major than Desmond Tutu. So I looked up stories of forgiveness. And I found something called the Forgiveness Project. And you can look this up too. And their whole purpose is to tell real stories of forgiveness so that others can realize how transformational forgiveness really is. And so I was reading through some of these stories, and there's everything from people forgiving uh, being caught in a genocide to very personal hurts. And there was a story that really caught my attention. It took place in England a few years back. And after a cricket match, um, and people were getting really drunk and disorderly, and a young man who was uh, in his late teens uh, punched another guy in the jaw. And that might seem kind of what you do when you get into a bar fight. And he took off. And it turns out where the young man had been hit in the face caused a bleed. And he slipped into a coma. And he died. And the attacker didn't know it for quite some time. And when he did and realized he was in that bar fight and he went to the police to say, I was in that fight. And they said, your friend said it was you. 
and he went to jail without even having a chance to fully digest what happened. And yet while he was in jail, he got a very light sentence because it was a drunken brawl kind of thing. From his point, he was drunk. Um, and he didn't get a big sentence. He only, he only served 14 months. And the parents of the man who had died were very upset about this and they, they really wanted more justice. And eventually they decided they wanted to find out more about this, the attacker. And as they found out more, they realized what a lousy life that fellow had had how he had dropped out of school himself, all the things that had happened to me, and they thought, we've got to start letting go of our anger. We can't help but start to let go of our anger when we see that man as another human being. And over time, it took years, but over time they met uh, with the help of a mediating agency that does these sorts of things. Isn't that wonderful? There's an agency you can call when you've had a terrible, terrible problem that needs forgiving. Most of us won't have the help of an agency to get through our forgiveness issues. At least I'm assuming most of you won't need the help of a, a mediation agency. But we do have, we have Jesus Christ, our Savior, and we have a community that prays for the forgiveness of trespasses. Forgive us as we must forgive others. When we get to those places in our life where we realize I am hurting because of something I have to forgive and let go of, that's when I think we need to call upon the help of God. And when we can look up the forgivenessproject.com and look at how other people have done it. Because those breaks in relationships, they hinder not just our family life or a friendship or a business, but they harm everyone that cares about us too, who wants us to be in a better situation. How have you been able to forgive? Tell the story. How do you need to forgive? You can tell that story too, to someone who knows it can pray with you for it. It's hard to let go of both sides of a disagreement that's become really painful. But we're not stuck there. We don't have to be stuck there. As Archbishop Tutu reminded us, it is part of peace. It is part of God's plan to re reconcile with those people that we're really struggling with. When we look squarely at it, we can start to clean the wound, ourselves and others. I will offer you my prayers and counsel for what they're worth. I know Jenny will too. If you've come to a place in your life where you realize, I need some help, I need some prayer to clean this wound, people who have been through it can say, it's worth it. May you know the healing, cleansing love that will fill the situation when you do your best to address it. God does not want us to walk around feeling burdened. He can't lift it off our shoulders immediately for us, but he sure will help us remove the burden of feeling broken in our relationships with others and with God. So know the love of God and the peace of God it passes understanding, and may it fill your hearts and minds with the knowledge that God walks with you whenever you engage in peacemaking. In his name, amen. Please stand as you are able. Together, let us pray. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that it is seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is in this mystery of communion with Christ, in body and in spirit, that we pray for God's children everywhere and for the church throughout the world. Today, especially, we remember those affected by wildfires, hurricanes, floods, COVID virus, and isolation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the broken and torn fabric of the earth and that yearns for healing praying in particular for our country and our leaders, for peace in the world in many troubled spots, for the victims of war and violence, and for those who keep the peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the unemployed, those in prison, those separated from loved ones because of COVID-19. We remember the bereaved, the oppressed, and the homeless. We ask God to bring justice to those who are deprived or abused because of their language, income, orientation, or skin color. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those we love who are ill. Al, Carol, Jackie C, Carl, Kathy, Ken, Luann, Patrice, Richard, Jackie, Suzanne, Marilyn, Christopher. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray also for those who have died, grateful for the love they showed to God, family, and neighbor. May we also come into the joys of heaven. We remember especially Tom, Pat, Dolores, and Joe. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself, mercifully hear our prayers for those we love, and grant that we who glory in the mystery of our redemption may have grace to take up our cross and follow him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. May we know ourselves deeply forgiven. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be seated when you're ready. Good morning, and uh, again, great to see you as we celebrate Holy Communion. We've got to uh, you know, help these clouds just keep them keep their rain inside today. Um, there is an explanation of Holy Communion, and um, we will be uh, coming distance by our family groups if you wish to receive communion. Um, Phil's going to explain in a moment about how that will work. Slightly different than last week. We, we think we've improved uh, the process, hopefully, and everyone who wishes to receive is completely welcome. 
welcome to do so and if you're up in the up in the uh, sky box there, I'll come up and bring you in to you if you'd like. So you don't have to negotiate these rather steep stairs. Well, good morning. For those of you who are maybe my age or older, and some you have somebody else around, happy grandparents day today. Bag, feed a family. Uh, sign up, genius. Please, we're doing that uh, through Bob for Bountiful Harvest through the end of the month. So if you can help them out, that would be wonderful. Fish and load, loaves. We served 61 families or 61 people last week. Thanks to all of you who helped either with food or cash, some type of donation, or who worked on the actual day. Justice and Change Committee. Tonight, tomorrow we finish our book study of me and white supremacy and we're ready to take on something else so Mary Beth wave there's Mary Beth you can talk to her about what you might want to start next so we've got other ideas uh, you have ideas please let us know what you would like to do uh, now for communion Beth wave okay Beth and I will be just uh, letting you come up okay so we'll dismiss you instead of going halfway and all the way up today we're going to just start in the front and go back so dave wave okay we're going to start with dave and we'll actually we'll start probably with barb but we'll then move back and we will point point to the families just wait till we point to you then you'll come up you will take the uh host back to your seat and eat it there All right, any questions? All right, thank you for coming out. See, the weather uh, held, got rid of everything for us overnight. So, another great day. Thank you. Let us offer to God our thanks and praise for another beautiful day with all that we have we share with God and one another. You are found me, Lord, need us here. As you are found me, Lord, need us here. As you are found me, Lord, need us here. Oh, Lord, need us here. As you are found
God of all power, source, and sustainer of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, shining light and unfolding dark, galaxies, suns, moons, and stars of the sky, planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your, By your will, will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of your creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your eternal word, a child born of your servant Mary, to fulfill your law opening for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. And so, God, we who have been redeemed by Jesus Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Savior. Sanctify us also. And let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. God of our ancestors, Redeemer and Mother of Israel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength pardon only and not for renewal. Accept these prayers and praises, Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We will today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. We are here because Jesus has called us. Strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where in bread and wine he meets us. And through him, we who are different are joined to each other. So come not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you just as you are. And if you feel it is not yet the right time for you to receive communion, Jesus understands that too and will bless your heart with his grace.
Now may the wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you today and always. Amen. Our service is over. Our service to the world now begins. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.